Hey guys, I just wanted to give a quick overview of some of the upgrades that I did this weekend. Uh, finally took my machine back in the house in a clean work area and decided that I had a ton of upgrades and things that I wish I had done differently that I was going to get all working in one weekend. So, um, one thing that I had tried a while back to do was put limit switches on. Um, like these. Uh, I tried that and I had real bad problems with uh, noise from the motors giving me false switches. A few other users had said they had done that and they said, oh, well, you just need to add another resistor or capacitor, but I found that the noise was a huge amount and uh, so I got kind of bummed out and put it on the table, but there was a user on the forum who had designed a switch shield for all the inputs on the Arduino. Um, you can see it right here because I, I talked with him in the forums and he when he actually... Uh, had some printed and populated I bought one from him um, it's a fantastic board it's got all of the uh, connections for limit switches and it shows their um, lights when any of them are flipped this is gonna go into alarm but I can you can see that when you know when I click a switch you'll see that it's going through there and all of those inputs go through opto isolators which is fantastic because it means that the energy signals that are getting put in there, unless it's enough energy to turn on an LED, it won't get through to the Arduino. The other nice thing is that this board, all of the input side from the switches and stuff, use the 24 volt uh, power supply. So all that noise and everything gets stays on that 24 volt line. And the Arduino, the 5 volt line, is on the other side of the opto isolator. And that so that ground plane and all that stays clean. And so this has been working real good. And And he said, well, while I'm at it, all the other input switches for like feed hold and reset and and uh, start cycle and all that kind of stuff I will might as well put those through the isolator too so those are down here and he's also got uh, easy connections for outputs like uh, uh, PDM PWM spindle control and uh, your cooling and like if you want to hook up your vacuum to a solid state relay to turn on the vacuum on and off and your spindle on and off all that stuff is up there and I love it because he moved the, the screw terminals off to the side so you can get to these things without having to pop the G-Shield off. There are a couple of connectors that are underneath there. One is the probe connector and one's the power connector. So make sure you screw those cables in before you put the G-Shield on top. Um, so that was my first big upgrade was getting that on. Second one was getting all the, the limit switches on and getting them wired up. Now you might notice that my machine looks a little bit different than most. So I did that wiring wiring three option when the shape Oko 2 first came out where everything is mounted on the machine um i actually if i do it all again i wouldn't do it again this way i just i'm sort of pot committed at this point and i've uh, been sticking with it but everything's mounted here so the only sort of moving cables to drag is like the uh, power and usb cable and then everything else runs and self-contained so um that keeps you from having to run all the motor wires and limit switch wires and everything off but like i said in the end i think it would be nice to have an enclosure box separate with all that stuff on there um so i got limit switches i got a limit switch shield um that uh meant that i could upgrade to gerbil 0.9 so i put that on uh which is great uh the machine moves way faster uh the baud rate now of course is way higher so it gets rid of some buffering issues and that sort of thing so the Gerbil 0.9 issue is great. And I wanted to mention, you can't see it in here, but the guy who made this board did a fantastic job. He's got some jumpers back behind the G-Shield there that lets you switch it between Gerbil 0.8 and 0.9 functionality. You just rotate the jumpers depending on which one you want. And the silk screen on the board tells you which way they go. So if you get it, make sure you set those jumpers whether you're using 0.8 or 0.9. If you're using 0.9, you can switch it, and that way the probe and the... Uh, Z limit switch pin that were swapped in 0.9 go to the correct places. So I got that on. Another upgrade that that let me do is it then let me do the probe for like a touch plate. So I can take a touch plate like this and I can hook it up to the probe. I'll show you that now how that works. Uh, you can issue the, the command manually or you can, Chili Pepper has a button for it, but you can use it and you can do the command in any G code sender. So you can come up here, um, let me unlock this because I was playing with the limit switches. And let's see if this will work. I may need to do this. 
Let's see. I'm just going to get it kind of close to the touch blade at first. Um, I think let's, let's go a little bit more. Okay. So what you would do is you would set that touch plate on top of whatever material you're getting ready to to mill into and you would tell it to run the touch probe and this will go until it detects continuity between those two things and then pull up as soon as it detects it. So now that sets your Z height automatically. So now you'll notice if I if I go to Z0 I'm going to pull this probe out so it's basically I've set it since the probe is just sitting on top of this it's kind of like this is my zero so now if I come over here and say go to zero on z-axis you'll see it'll go perfectly to that spot and you get a good clean zero without having to eyeball it and things like that so I got my touch probe I got Gerbil 0.9 I got limit switches I got my limit switch shield the next thing I wanted to hook up was my dust collection. I'd been wanting to hook up a dust collection that used like some local line like this. So I got this all mounted up. It's not fancy. I just have the pipe running and just have it zip tied for now. And kind of had to fudge something here for the um, get this hose there to go in it. And this, I just got it kind of hanging down and it goes to my dust deputy uh, cyclone separator. Um, but it, it, I haven't run a job with it yet, but I get pretty good suction at the end of these, and then I can move these around and sort of point them. Sorry, I wish my camera would focus. I can point these, you know, wherever I want, depending on where the stock is that I'm working on. And uh, and then if if the thing gets too deep and the motor's driving, these will, of course, push up and move, which is nice so that I don't have to worry about it. You know, they'll, they'll give if they run into something, which is nice. So that was another upgrade. Uh, another one that I did was I got, I've been having that collet on the DW660 that was down here uh, that I wished I had removed. So I took all this off and got that collet off and also rotated the interior plastic around so that the, uh, the axle, the spindle axle hole button is now in the front. That makes it super easy to take the collet on and off now. So thanks to the wiki person that put those instructions on there. So yeah, I've got now my my router in a good place with the collet removed. I got my local line dust collection. I've got uh, a touch plate capability. Oh, one last thing is I I wanted to be able to. This touch plate is wired into the uh, that limit switch shield, but since I, this whole thing moves with it, I don't want wires hanging off and dragging wires that I don't need. And I realized, well, this touch plate I only need it right before I start a job. Once I start a job, I don't need this dragging around so what I did is I ran um, I hooked up the wires coming out of the limit switch shield into this little telephone wire coupler and just uh, I super glued it and then put some zip ties around it to hold it and then I added on to my touch probe cable a little phone plug so that I can just when I'm ready to do the touch probe I just plug it in and use it and then when I'm ready to run my job, I can just take it off and take my whole touch probe and put it out the way. So that was another little thing I came up with. Um, all in all, it's been a cool weekend of just upgrading the machine and getting all these things out of the way that I wished I'd had for a long time. Oh, and I even hooked up some things to manage my uh, cable a little bit. I don't have a good uh, one of those train track tread things but this little thing has been working out I just added some rubber bands here to hold this to keep it from sagging down and catching on my workpiece so that's been working out but anyway I just wanted to share that with any with folks it might help spark an idea if you're interested in this limit switch shield uh, just today on the forum uh, the guy who designed it posted all the drawings so you can either order a board uh, or, or, or uh, mill out a PC board and populate it yourself but he opened all the hardware design for this and I can vouch for it. I think it's a fantastic board. So hope that gives someone some ideas or inspires someone uh, maybe upgrade their machine a bit. Talk to you guys later.